we're so excited to be here. Um, I'm just gonna get our presentation up really quick. Everyone close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So my name is Mary Jane Chandler, and I am with World Wildlife Fund. Um, everyone might know us as from the familiar panda logo that we have internationally, but just to add a little bit more context, we are an international nonprofit organization that um, commits a lot of work to conservation and environmental efforts. And we have a project that is dedicated to K through 12 schools and it's called Food Waste Warriors, and we love that name because we really think that it empowers a lot of students and schools to fight for environmental impact. Um, and how we do that is, in working with K-12 schools all across the US, we help them to measure, analyze, and then strategize solutions to ultimately reduce their cafeteria school food waste. Um, and so we've had the pleasure of working across the state of Florida um, right here in Orlando in Orange County Public Schools, but also down in Fort Lauderdale in Broward County Public Schools. And we actually have two of our partners today that have been working on with us uh, on one of our projects this past year, Daniel St. Ange and Elaine Fiore, who I'll pass it over to introduce themselves really quickly. Hi, I'm Daniel St. Ange. I'm a math science coach at Citrus Elementary at OCPS Schools. And uh, I was fortunate enough to um, receive an email about the program that, um, that they were offering and applied to actually two different programs, one with OCPS itself, which was um, also with the composting, and that's kind of how we got involved. Hello everyone, my name is Elaine Fiore. I'm an environmental educator with Broward County Public Schools. I teach sustainable food systems through a school food forest project, as well as a food recovery project in the uh, school cafeterias, and I My goodness, that was loud. Uh, food Waste Prevention Week. Uh, which takes place the first week of April, and we'll talk a little bit more about that after. And Mary Jane is also on our K through 12 committee. Awesome, thank you both for being here. Um, so today we are gonna be talking about our specific Florida-related work, um, and we have some fun data for everyone, which we know that everyone really likes to see. Um, so to kind of make it a little bit more interactive, I, I know that it kind of briefly showed earlier, but if anyone wants to throw out a number, how much waste do you think comes from U.S. school food um, annually? Any number? Yes, and what in and the tons? U.S. In the U.S., yeah. Is it tons? In tons. Mm -hmm. A hundred million tons. All right, yeah, it's not far off. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? Fifty million tons. All right. Um, so it is 530,000 tons of food that's wasted annually across K through 12 school districts. And this is coming from a report that we did um, that WWF led back in 2019. So it is, of course, pre-COVID. Um, and has anyone here seen a, a school bus? Raise your hand if you've seen a school bus. Yeah. So imagine a school bus filled completely with students. Now multiply one of these by 26,500, and that's roughly equal to what this number kind of represents. Um, and so, as we can see that a large amount of tonnage for our food waste is coming from schools on an annual basis, um, we recognize that it's occurring and that this is a large problem. And what this means environmentally is that all of the water, the fresh water usage that's going into food is being wasted along with the energy, the labor, um, the fuel, the fertilizers that are going into food as well, as well as 6.1% of the contributors of greenhouse gas emissions release. Um, and it actually takes up uh, the largest portion of our landfill volume at 24%. So environmentally, it, it's a really large opportunity. Um, as well as socially, if we're looking at economic impact of this, this amount of tons is also equal to $1.7 billion. If we think about what that could do for schools in terms of infrastructure development, transportation, or even the school breakfast and school lunch program, it can, it can make a lot of difference, um, as well as impacting children nutritional health. Um, in Central Florida alone, one in five children are food insecure, meaning they aren't sure where their next meal is going to come from. 
And a lot of the food that is being thrown away is also perfectly edible. Um, all that is needed is kind of the strategy to help recover it um, and another way to kind of rescue this food. Um, so to share a little bit more about the impact that has been happening across the OC, the schools and Orange County Public Schools that we've been working with, this is just some quick numbers um, around the amount of food that has been diverted from the trash bins um, and composted. This is just from one cafeteria audit that we did in each of the schools, so about 431 pounds. Um, the amount of items that have been recovered and redistributed just from this one audit as well at 837. Um, these two things together have led to about 1,362 um, greenhouse gas emis emissions saved that we have input through our Food Waste Warrior database to kind of get these numbers through. Um, and we've been able to impact um, 1,798 students. And to talk about one of our schools that we have worked with, uh, Citrus Elementary, to share a little bit more about how they got involved and then all that their school is doing related to food waste. Sure, so uh, being a math science coach and on a leadership team at my school, I had the opportunity or uh, you know, the other duties as assigned. And so cafeteria duty, lunchroom duty was one of those. Um, and I was constantly seeing the amount of uh, food that was being thrown right into the trash, like whole lunches. Um, it was just, I just couldn't believe the amount of food that, the, that was being thrown away. And for the past few years, I've just, I've talked to people and said, you know, surely we could do something about this. Um, and then last year I received a, several emails, um, and then one of them being the grant program through WWF, and we applied to that as well as uh, signing up for a pilot program with OCPS um, and we actually got accepted into both so what that entailed and you know I had to get approval from our administration which that took a little bit of doing but uh, once they approved it and I said you know I'll take charge I'll make sure that everything get, gets um, into place where we, we, what we need to be doing um, it was fantastic as far as the, the way that the process just kind of streamlined itself. Once we got it started, um, it was very smooth. The kids kind of took charge. We started with a, a food waste audit. Um, one of the partners, uh, Four Roots, and the people from that organization, they came out and they did a food waste audit and we shared that with the students so that they could see um, the amount of food that was being wasted, what types of items were uh, being thrown away the most. And then we just, um, we started a, a share table and then we also did a, a simple cart, which you can see in uh, I believe one of the, Maybe not in one of the pictures, um, but there's, we have a rolling cart and we just roll around two bins and go across the tables and the kids pretty much do it themselves. I mean, they, they know what to dump in there and not to put trash into the bins for composting. Um, and then this is a picture of our share table. When they leave the cafeteria line, any food that they're not gonna eat that's unopened, um, they put it into these bins and then other students can take from those bins Anything that is not taken uh, from those at the end of the lunch period, uh, that all that food gets donated. So it gets boxed up and donated, and I believe it's about, fit, right now it's about 50 pounds every two weeks that we donate. Um, but we have drastically reduced uh, the amount of food that is going into our dumpsters. Um, and then, you know, through between the uh, students going to the share table and uh, the amount of composting, which is right about uh, three to five hundred pounds a week, um, that that has limited the definitely limited the amount that is going into our dumpsters, and that was really what my goal was, and I know that's that's the the goal of the program as well, and then we're continuing to. Um, educate our students. We've involved our student council. They've gotten involved in making some posters so that we can further uh, reduce some of that food waste. 
Awesome. Yeah, and I love the picture um, on our left, the audience's right, of the, yes. these are posters that your students created as well yep. um, to educate others about wanting to reduce food waste, which is really cool. Um, awesome. So to add a little bit more detail in terms of data and graphics of what the other participating schools in this program um, after we, we've been doing these cafeteria food waste audits, which is us going into the schools and sorting um, the leftovers that are on the students' plates into categories of fruit, main dish, which is going to be you know, the hamburger or the pasta, um, whatever protein is really served that day, um, into other milk and vegetable. This is what was found after just one, um, one audit at each of the schools aggregated together. Um, Obviously, I think one of the, the biggest things that were, was seen in terms of the most wasted items was milk and fruit. Was this your experience as well in doing audits? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then close up in the main dish. And I think what's also really interesting is that we did, we also graphed out um, the unopened items that could, that had the potential to be redistributed or donated. Um, during these first audits as well. And we can also see that milk and fruit are some of those highest items that have the potential to be diverted from the trash. They have the potential to be recovered um, and they're still edible. So it's just kind of showing that those could be strongly reduced um, through a practice like share tables or donation uh, from going into the trash bin. Um, and so just moving forward really quick in what we're doing across um, OCPS is investing in a educational campaign around food waste reduction, specifically to milk, because it is one of the highest categories. And this is working with the school district leadership um, to put out this messaging um, to, encourage, to encourage students to either consume the milk that they're taking or to not take as much. Um, so this is kind of one forward approach that we're continuing to do over the course of the school year, um, as well as expanding the work to Broward County Public okay. Schools, which Elaine is uh, gonna be generously talking about. Sure, and then what um, Mary Jane mentioned was with the milk being such a big issue, when the kids go through the line, they're required to take three food items and one needs to be a fruit or vegetable. It, they don't need to take milk, but years ago they did. So there's a lot of uh, education that needs to take place. So we're really glad that you all are doing that. So in Broward County, we have a uh, combination program that we're working on the school level as well as in the community level. We have a a group of high school students that are in, well, I could start talk to the first one. Uh, we've had a cafeteria share table program for a number of years. And the biggest why, as to why a lot of us are so passionate about this, is because if a school does not have a share table, we are training our children day after day to treat perfectly good food as trash. They don't have, their, they have food that's unwrapped, unpeeled, it's good to eat, and they could be sharing it with people in the community. So the share table program is beautiful. The kids feel really good about it because they know they're helping the environment. Food in the landfill, we're here talking about climate. Food in the landfill creates methane gas, which is 30 times more potent than CO2. Um, and then all the uh, resources that are being saved. So kids feel good that they're doing something for the environment, and then it's good for the community because they're helping to feed others. So we have the share table, we had trainings for our teachers, uh, the, the grant between uh, WWF and Volo helped to pay for the actual share tables and refrigerators. Um, we do have Food Waste Prevention Week, came out of, it started, it really started in California in 2018. In Florida, there were a group of us who were like, we need to do something about food waste in all, in events sector all over. So we hosted Florida Food Waste Prevention Week and it was six multi-pronged social media, K through 12 schools, 
in-person events, community service, and it's expanded now. This is the third year, it's a national campaign, and it takes place the first week of April. So we'd like to invite you all to participate and have your schools participate too. Um, we did a pilot with Miami-Dade and Broward County Schools. We did a poetry contest, and the kids wrote haikus on what food means to me. Uh, and the, we're getting the poems and judging them now. 700, I'm so, I told Mary Jane, I'm like, thank goodness we did a pilot and we didn't make this national because we would have had been overwhelmed with the poems. So we're working away so we can make it national for next year, but the teachers loved it and the kids enjoyed it as well. And then the other thing is, with kids, you get a two for one. Someone mentioned earlier that about a CEO talking, getting information from his grandson and making decisions based on that. When we're educating our children, they're going home and they're educating their parents as well. Um, and then if you click to the next one, I will speak to. So the other part of this is um, the student activism, which we're really excited about. Uh, there's a group of kids at, they're at South Plantation High School. They were, they were doing the food waste audit. As Mary Jane and Daniel mentioned, you know what? You have to measure what you're gonna change. So the food waste audit, those numbers shock people. Our food nutrition services, people who are maybe a little reluctant to make change, they're shocked when they see these numbers and they, they feel compelled to do something about it. So the kids are planning, they're doing their audit next week, which we're really excited about. This is their second audit they're doing and they're so passionate about it, they've gone we didn't ask them to do it, but they went to their city of plantation commission meeting and they spoke about food waste and how it's a very solvable issue and our community needs to do something about it. And they asked them, will you proclaim food waste prevention week? So mm -hmm. they proclaim, they're gonna proclaim it. And the, uh, actually during food waste prevention week, we have lots of webinars and they'll be in many languages too. It's will be in English, Spanish and French, one of them. And the girls have been invited to speak to it, it's going to be going out to everyone about their project and uh, they spoke there was a group of students from Virginia Beach who they met with their local legislatures and they got a bi bipartisan law changed in the state of Virginia around the dates and um, reducing food waste so the kids met with them online and they got information so they're just really it's exciting to see the life skill, you know, obviously it's a no-brainer. We need to do something about it. And there's beautiful life skills for the kids to learn too. So I will pause and turn back over. Awesome, thank you both so much. I actually think that is the end of our presentational slide. So I see that we have 30 seconds for questions. Rapid fire. <laughs> That's right. Yes, go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, this, we've received this feedback, I think, actually we led this presentation just the other day, um, and one of the main things is really trying to understand like the role of school gardens. I know that there's actually another school in Orange County that has a culture garden that is trying to be very reflective of the, the students that are attending the school and growing the foods that they're more used to, the fruits and vegetables, um, and wanting to really start to analyze the usage from of that, the food that they're growing in the garden, and then bringing that to the cafeteria, and really wanting to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that there's a lot of potential there to, especially through like fresh Florida foods, like the program that. 
Yeah, we were just at the farm to school conference down the road, and that was something that was addressed, is that if the fact that kids are required to take a fruit or vegetable, but they don't have any choices in the fruits or vegetables, so wouldn't it, shouldn't we consider giving them choices in fruits and vegetables and thing? uh, things? <laughs> well, you know, and some of the, that one, that's a food you know, nutrition services. And I can speak to that yeah. just a bit, just because I'm in the cafeteria, and they have um, experimented with some of those types of foods being brought in in, in different um, ethnic categories and they, they have done that and then they actually were because they passed out surveys to the students and had them check off like what types of foods or if they like the ones that were being presented so I know that's something they're probably looking at okay, okay. thank you thank you